Hello and welcome to LabRite. Today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, robust and actually quite deluxe oil skin tarp for your camping setup such as this. This has been what my whole oil skin series has been leading up to. So I've got my dry bags, I've got my ground cover, now I've got an oil skin tarp to uh, keep me dry and out of the weather when I'm camping. And this is a very versatile piece of equipment that can be set up in a number of different ways. This, for example, is a uh, plow point setup because it's a bit shaped like a plow. Gives me really good protection from three sides and I can have fire up here in front and this will reflect the heat from the fire and keep me nice and cozy and there's ample of stretching room back here for one or two people to sleep in so if this is something that interests you like and subscribe and i show you exactly how i made this as usual with these kind of builds, we start with the fabric. This is a cotton fabric, non seize through, non flexible, pretty tough. I found it in the category of awning fabric or tarp fabric. And uh, uncharacteristically for me, this is the lightest variant I could find because I'm worried this tarp will become too heavy for backpacking and I'm trying to save a bit of weight. Still, this is 300 GSM. This is pretty tough fabric. For this 3 by 3 meter tarp you need at least 7 meters of fabric because it's only a bit more than one meter and fifty wide so you need two times three and then you need a little bit extra for reinforcement pieces and to be on the safe side so you need at least seven meters better seven and a half or eight meters you can never have too much fabric anyhow my cutting table is exactly one meter wide so I'm using it to measure the three meter pieces and I'm giving it about 20 centimeters extra because the fabric is a bit wider than 150 it's about 160 160 centimeters wide and after subtracting the length I need for the hems and for the seam that adds up to around 3 meter 10, 3 meter 14 and from here it's straightforward. Measure the pieces, cut the pieces, nothing special here. From the leftover fabric which is a bit less than I would have liked. I'm cutting reinforcement pieces, triangular shaped. Uh, the size is accidental, it's about 20 centimeters on the shorter sides of the triangles I'm going to cut. And I'm cutting 16 of these triangles. Because I've now run out of my primary fabric that I wanted to use, I'm using some very similar, slightly heavier, leftover cotton fabric and I'm cutting three rectangles of roughly the same dimensions as the triangles.
Now the sewing starts. First step I'm doing is I'm hemming in all of the reinforcements, all of the squares and triangles by folding it over twice and then securing it with a simple linear stitch. I'm using a giant, unpractically huge spool of really tough synthetic polyester yarn that could be used to sew leather. I just happen to have a lot of it. This is really tough yarn. I can't pull it apart by hand and this should work fine for a heavy duty project such as this. When sewing you always start by going back and forth a bit to secure the thread so it doesn't unravel on its own. This is a really easy way of hemming this in way faster than doing any special hemming pattern or doing zigzag. Very clean too. And more important for this project, it adds strength to the edges because there are three layers of fabric to pull on. These sharp triangle corners are a bit tricky to do. I found on my second try that the best, the best way to do it is by first folding the end there that is sticking out inwards and then folding over twice that gives you a really clean corner. The 90 degree angle is trivial by comparison. And at the end of each seam, you also go back and forth a bit to secure the stitches. Clean it up and that gives us one reinforcement part, the rest of which I will sew off screen. This took a long time. For completion's sake, I also show how to do the squares but they just have 90 degree corners, so this is trivial compared to the triangle. No fancy folding technique required. Now we are ready to sew together the big parts. Working with huge pieces of fabric like this, it's important to manage where they are going around your sewing machine. It's easier if you have a lot of space to work with, but make sure that the part you are sewing is free of wrinkles and that the fabric can move freely through the sewing machine, that it doesn't have to pull hard on it, that they don't get stuck, don't catch anywhere. For this, the most important connecting seam, we are doing a folded over connection like this. So it is also hemmed in at the same time. And if you pull on this, it will lock together. It's a bit tricky to sew, but it is well worth the effort. I found it is easiest to do by overlapping 
and just sewing together the two pieces and then fold them in a second step. So I'm overlaying them about one to two centimeters and just doing a linear stitch to connect the two pieces. Now that the two pieces are connected, it's easier to do this fold and secure it with another linear stitch. I'm not showing all of that, I'm just letting you see the beginning of this stitch, then fade to black and show the end. That second stitch has secured one edge of this fold, but the other is still hanging free. So I've flipped over the whole fabric, the whole top, and I'm sewing on the still unsecured fold, thus giving me two good stitches and they seem about a centimeter apart and the uh, initial one, the third one, is hidden inside of the folds. This is a really tough connection of the two pieces that make up the top. With the two pieces of the top connected to one, the next step is to hem in all of the edges and I'm doing a quite generous double fold to hem these in just as the reinforcement pieces because this will also make the edges stronger. There will be three layers of fabric at all of the edges where the most forces will work on the top and this gives it the best chance of withstanding those forces and not tear anywhere. At this point you could call it a day on sewing and just secure the ropes to the edges of the top by knotting a stone in there so you can secure a loop of rope around it but I'm going for a more fancy, more say professional solution. So I'm sewing in all of these 19 reinforcements I've made at the beginning, just with a simple linear stitch and I start at the four corners. Following the four corners, I do the four middle parts. Finding two of them is easy, it's where the two pieces connect. For the other one, I fold over the top and pull it tight, giving me the exact middle 
Song. And after doing the same thing to find the middle of the triangle piece, dropping it right on my mark there, I sew on four more triangle pieces. Then using the same method of folding and pulling as before, but between the middle and the corner triangle pieces I find the new middle for the eight remaining triangle pieces to go. So they go in the middle between the corner pieces and the halfway pieces. And eight more to go. With the 16 triangle pieces secure, it's time for the three rectangular pieces. They go into the middle of the top and using the same folding and pulling tight method I'm marking the exact middle of the top. As this is such a large piece of fabric, it's a bit tricky to get it into the exact middle and I'm sewing these square pieces on rotated by 45 degrees so the corners go along the length of the seam connecting the two pieces of the top and it's also a bit off center though so the corners are not exactly over the seams because by now all of these folds become pretty thick and I can't reliably go through the folds of the corners that will be six folds and the three folds that make up the seam so I'm offsetting it a bit so I don't have to sew through the corners and the seam at the same time. And I'm running a linear stitch along the seam to start with and then I secure the rest of the square going all around the edges. Then it's time to once more find the middle between the, uh, the middle and the edges. So that would be a, the one third distance market and then secure the two remaining square pieces just as I did the middle one. Now it's time to sew on the loops that I made all that reinforcements for. I'm using a flat cotton band that is really tough. It hopefully won't tear on me. And I start by figuring out how long these should be. I've seen tops that were reinforced all along the edges with this kind of band, but since I did a general, generous double fold, I don't think I actually need this. Just need to secure the loop to the reinforcement points. After figuring out the length I want, it's time to cut. 19 pieces from the pancake spool.
I decided to use as much of my reinforcements as possible, so there's quite a length to sew on. And I'm sewing this along the edges of the flat strips and also do a cross through the middle. And I think the most important seam, the most important stitches will be this one over the double folded hem. With all the layers of fabric from the reinforcements and the double foldings, there are one, two, three, six layers of fabric below that. So this should be the strongest point with the strongest possible connection for the loops. I'm also not going all the way to the corner. I leave about a length that is uh, as long as the flat strip is wide, as the flat band is wide mainly because I don't want to sew on the very corner. As you can see, the very corner is very thick from all the folds that meet there. And I can't reliably sew through that. Also doing a fancy fold with the loop here, a fancy loop. I'm not sure if this is the best way to go about this. I think it'll work. For the non-corner pieces, the eight non-corner pieces, I find that the best way to secure the loops is just sewing them on square and I find that the length that I have cut are too long for this purpose so I have to shorten the pre-cut pieces to the new and appropriate length. And these are soon on in the same manner. I'm going all around the outside and also do a cross through the middle. But because these run in parallel, it's easy enough to sew both pieces on at the same time. This is the last of the sewing, I promise. Onto the square reinforcements in the middle of the top go our last three loops and I sew them over the seam that is connecting the two parts of the top guaranteeing the strongest possible connection for these loops. On that same sewing pattern, going along the edges and then doing a cross in the middle. Now that all of the sewing is done, I've waited for a streak of sunny weather and I've got myself this not very clean plastic tub and I start by putting like a spoonful of brown pigment in there because I want the tub to be slightly brown. 
And then I add the isopropanol alcohol. The oil skin mixture is 50% boiled linseed oil and 50% thinner like mineral, spirit or isopropanol alcohol. That helps to thin the linseed oil down so it penetrates the fabric easier, spreads easier and dries faster. I'm using isopropanol alcohol because that is what I could easily get. That is what I had on hand, but you can also use mineral spirit. I'm mixing here 2 liters of linseed oil with 2 liters of isopropanol alcohol, giving me 4 liters of paint. This is basically oil based paint. Because I calculated that my 300 GSM fabric. I've got 9 square meters of it, so it should weigh 3 kilograms. I think it can take its own weight in water. So I thought, yeah, 3 liters of paint should be enough. And if I do 4, I'll be on the safe side. But as it turned out, 4 wasn't enough. I needed between 5 and 6 liters to get all of the tarp good and covered in the oil skin mixture and the way I found is easiest to get a good and even spread of your mixture throughout the top is by stepping on it and working it with your feet working it with your body weight um, don't think I have to mention it, but you should wear your work clothes, something that can get dirty, something that you don't care about if you get a lot of brown paint spilled on it. And just continue turning it around and working the mixture into it until you've got a nice even spread. Once you're done, put it on a cloth line to dry. I tried wringing some excess mixture out of it, but I found that to be impossible. So I just hoped I didn't have too much mixture on here and hang it up to dry using a lot of cloth pins. And this will need a lot of time for drying. That's why I waited until the weather forecast showed a whole week of sunny weather and I also rotated it and flipped it over a few times during the drying process so it would dry good and even from all sides. But this finishes the build. All that is left to do is set this up and film the intro. I start by measuring out about 10 meters of hemp rope here. I've gotten some real high quality hemp rope. Not the cheap stuff they sell to make decorations. This is rope which an actual tensile strength rating. So this supposedly takes about 200 kilograms to tear this so I should be able to climb up on it. But honestly, I don't want to try it out. It is only 8 mm thick. They use longer strands of hemp to make this than for the cheap rope. Measuring 10 meters, not because I need this much, but because I've got 20 meters of this rope. 
and 10 meter pieces are useful for a great number of applications. While if I were to measure and cut out just the small piece that I actually need here, I will end up with many very small pieces of rope that uh, are not very useful on their own. So I'd rather have really long pieces with uh, a lot of extra for most applications than have the exact right length I'm needing right now. Looping one end around a uh, loop in one of the corners and I'm fastening it up on a tree with a slippery loop to keep it in place and to be able to easily move it. I'm taking a uh, fairly beefy tent pack and I secure the opposite corner on the ground. And then the other two corners and this will form a kind of plow shape. So that's what this setup is called, a plow point tarp setup. You can find a great number of setups for this kind of tarp on YouTube. I uh, leave a link to like one of the better videos I've come across when researching this. Onto the second piece of rope I tie a toggle, simple loop, and I'm putting this through the central fastening loop in the tarp. And then you can draw this to a tree or if you don't have a tree a triangle formed of two sticks will do the trick to pull the center of the setup up and back giving you more interior space and it will help with wind and shedding of water. I loop this around another sizable tent pack off screen and then I tension it and secure it on the sticks. Very similar to how I've secured the other end. Simple knot with a slippery end. That's probably a name for this. But uh, I wouldn't know it. And this finishes the setup. Now, all that is left to do is to film the intro. Thanks for watching and goodbye.